too high. It's easy. Yeah, okay. Too high. It's too high. But why not? Why not Neely? Like that. By Norton's. Many, many years ago. Fifty years ago. Jeff, what's it like um, coming down here and meeting up with all the old timers? Well, it's a great pleasure to me because, of course, this was racing when I was probably at my prime myself, though I wasn't racing. But I remember them because it was a World Championship Grand Prix in those days. And uh, when you see the riders now, you have fond memories of them. They were great battles. They were, regardless of expense, machines brought specially from Italy and from Japan. Uh, some of them are on display here. Some are replicas. doesn't matter. They make the same noise. Um, there weren't the same number of people coming to watch the TT in those days, for certain. It was a round of the World Championship, uh, and, and the pressure was on for the riders such as you see here, Taviri, Rob, Bryans, uh, Reed, and people like that. They were all under pressure to get World Championship points as part of the series. What is amazing to me is how young the riders still look, and you do forget that what we're talking about here is 35 years ago. Um, the World Championship then was at its height, the TT was at its height for that type of arrangement. Now it's a social festival and the people remember the riders with affection and so do I. Uh, we lost a few in those days of course but people like Tavieri, they're evergreen, he's 70 and absolutely amazing and their recall of what happens. They can tell you a fault they developed on a machine in practice, you know, 40 years ago. Uh, long forgotten by everybody else, but the people here um, are delighted to rub shoulders with them because this is the thing about the TT. You wouldn't get this at any other meeting now, and particularly the World Championships. Uh, you just don't meet the riders. They're locked away, they're closeted away, and they're reluctant to talk to their fans. And here you can come and see world champions by the score. It's so nice. Good. There's a World Cup football match on television. England are playing. It's a great man of interest. Yeah, England were one up at the last I heard of it, but uh, nobody, nobody cares. And, and as Colin Edwards, the World Superbike former champion and running second at the moment, said, he couldn't believe in the Isle of Man that there's a full Grand Prix, Moto Grand Prix on a Mugello in Italy, and nobody cares. They're not watching it on television or anything. They're wandering around here looking at the old bikes. And that tells you something about the TT, that it's the intimacy of it where you can get close. That's what it's about. Do you think that the riders of today will one day be appearing here <laughs> doing the same thing? Well, I suppose they will, but of course the people who will be coming to see them will be appropriately older, as they will. It won't be me, and uh, I've had my day on it, and I'm glad to have been associated with it, to have a, a small part of it. I wish I'd have been commentating when these bikes were being ridden. I just, well, in fact, I did make it, actually, in 69... No, 1970, the MVs were still riding. But the uh, uh, Bill Ivey and people like that, Bill was killed later on. But yeah, they were great days, and, and I don't see why David Jeffries can't be such a big hero in, in the appropriate amount of time. He's only 26 now. But uh, yes, I suppose the same thing will prevail. 40 years of bloody trials riding. <laughs> okay, only 40? Good. Yeah. <laughs> running. Well, Phil Reid, it's a pleasure to welcome you back to the Isle of Man, and you have the honour of leading away the parade again. And uh, you had your ups and downs again, in the Isle I've of Man. I've never let it away. <laughs> yeah. I've never let it. Didn't you go no. with John Surtees that time? Uh, yeah, on the MVs, did, you were number did we one. Did it? Yeah. Oh, you've got a fantastic memory. <laughs> when you come back to the Isle of Man, though, you're still here a worship for the endeavours you made. They were fantastic days, weren't they? Wonderful, wonderful golden era, really. And, uh, you know, I like to come back again and be involved in enthusiasm of, of, of the mecca of motorcycle racing, really. Um, there's 40, no place like this in the world. It's 40 years and more since you won the TD and your first attempt after winning the Manx, 61 junior. Mm. And then you went on to a record, well not a record number, but certainly a lot of wins on a variety of machinery. And although they say Halewood was the master of changing bikes, you were nearly as good yourself. Um, well, I suppose I, I was. I mean, I won 125, 250 uh, and, and 500 world championships and the former one over here in, in terrible conditions, the first ever one. And, uh, well, they're just motorcycles, aren't they? And the battles you had with Bill Ivey on the Yamahas were quite something in 68, weren't they? Was it real aggro or was it press aggro? No, it was real aggro, really, because um, I'd invited uh, 
I suggested to the Yamaha Motor Company uh, that um, Bill Ivey join the team because he, I thought, was the best rider to ride 125s and 500s and we needed another European rider after my Dufford engine so it seemed like he wouldn't uh, return for about six months. So I invited Bill, <clears throat> I called him when he was at Brands Hatch and asked him to come here. But three years after that um, he uh, felt he should uh, be given the opportunity to win the 250 World Championship when uh, Honda and Suzuki had uh, pulled out. So really it was only the factory Yamahas. And there was no uh, discussion with me or agreement with me. I was just told fait accompli, which rather upset me because I battled for two years with the 250 to develop that into a really fine machine as we had in 1968. And uh, I went along with, with the plan and the team orders, which were against the FIM code at the time, team orders. And, uh, and I heard that Bill had been saying to people that uh, he could beat Phil Reed in the 250 easily. And I said to him on the start line in, in the Czechoslovakian Grand Prix, Bill, if you think you can beat me, uh, you're going to have to beat me. We're racing. And he said some expletive and, uh, <laughs> and we raced and I, and I won. And, uh, but no one knew that I shouldn't have won until he came in behind me and started shouting the odds about you. F this and that and the other. <laughs> so obviously it had it blown the scene now and I was in, I had to report to the FIM stewards and promised that I would uh, ride to, uh, to team orders, I wouldn't ride to fixed races and uh, from then on it was battle. Um, okay, but it was quite, quite exciting and it was for real. Yeah, right, it was and it was here too. But you also rode the MVs, of course, starting on Norton's but eventually moved on to the MVs here and then to Honda. Yeah, unfortunately, I only had one ride here in 1962 on the 350, and of course, uh, when Party was killed on the mountain, uh, uh, Count Augusta stopped us riding here because he felt it was too uh, too dangerous. Uh, and uh, obviously, then I, I really missed out in that that golden era for me when I was then allowed to ride the faster uh, 500s. I must say, though, that you were a little harsh on the TT when you departed, but then came back. Well, um, I don't think I was harsh at all. I thought I was, I was doing realistic, it for, for, the, for the realistic. Yeah. Well, realistic, yeah. But just remember, Jeff, I was five times world champion. I came in at 72. I was paid 50 pound expense money, and the prize money for winning the 250 race was 100, 200, 200, 200, 200 yeah. 150 pounds. Yeah. I came back four years later. I was paid 10,000 more. Yeah more than that and the prize money was up so uh, well, you did us a favour and your other riders then well I did and uh, I felt that the riders weren't being paid enough anyway to, for spending two weeks here it's like two weeks you know yeah. and the ferry um, and the um, the ACU uh, perhaps the tourist board could have afforded that and they've suddenly found uh, now it's not a world championship event and you're not forced to come here they found that extra money to pay riders uh, what they deserve well, David Jeffries won £25,000 yesterday. He deserves it. I think it was an incredible, incredible performance. I'm very impressed. OK, now you go down, as, as you say, to uh, 125, 250, 500. It was quite something when the two strokes were coming in to, to win the World Championship again for MV, wasn't it? The 125s? No, the 500, when you won the World Championship against the Yamahas that were, re that were coming out then. Oh, it was hard work. I mean, uh, obviously, the two-stroke, 500 two-strokes were developing faster than the four-strokes. Um, because you know they obviously had more potential, and they're developing like nearly 200 brake horsepower now, or last year. Yeah, so we were struggling, and uh, MVs being uh, the supreme team that they believed they were, uh, it didn't. Uh, it was difficult for me to get them to improve. Like I had to introduce disc brakes to them and magnesium wheels, which makes the <coughs> the bike easier <laughs> to ride, more competitive. And uh, yeah, I did battle for a couple of years, and uh, if it hadn't been one small electrical problem when I was leading the Finnish Grand Prix, uh, I would have had, um, had a hat trick of 500 wins yeah. against Agostini twice on the on, on, on the Yamaha. Well, you were with Agostini and Halewood. Um, the three of you were a, a, a tremendous act at any Grand Prix. You knew that you would be giving the lot. Well, we didn't think of it like that. I mean. We were giving everything, you know, obviously we wanted to win and not at all costs, but um, yeah, it was very competitive and, and very exciting and very hard. 
we gave our best and I mean they were brilliant riders, Aga was brilliant and Mike was brilliant and, and, and Lanzavori and uh, Saren and they were all brilliant riders and there were many others that, that on their day were unbeatable. Okay, well it's a pleasure to welcome you back. We hope you get a good run in the parade tomorrow. Let's hope it's sunny. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Bill. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. the big screen. Once I got going, I was okay. Well, you got through it all right? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, you couldn't go wrong with that race, could you? Yeah, no, it was perfect. Oh, gosh, it was what, was the, what caused the drama at the end with Jeffrey's bike? Gearbox selector pin fell out. It was the same as at the Northwest 200 in practice, but then he tried to find another gear and buggered the box up completely. Whereas when it happened yesterday, he knew not to touch the pedal. It was in third. He put his foot in the swinging arm and rode it home in third. As he said, if he'd have gone for something else, it would, that would have been it. So amazing that they, they've had the problem and it's still there. Yeah. Eh? Fantastic ride. Yeah, fantastic was, ride. Yeah. Fantastic and the lap record that he set was on the slowing down lap coming into refuel. And he said he was going for it on the last lap up to the hairpin when the gears went. So heaven knows what time that would have been. Yeah. Well done, Jeff. How's, the, anyway. how's the, the publications and everything going? Yeah, then? all right, thank you. Yeah. Well, can you do a little bit to the camera then? Thanks. Welcome, yeah. Well, yeah. Welcome. Um, it's a great festival for the Isle of Man, but you come at a different perspective now rather than riding. You're in the media industry and uh, it's just as hard going, I think, really, if not harder. I think in many ways it is harder, definitely. It uh, certainly gives you a different perspective on um, on the scene, but just, well, almost as exciting, not quite as exciting. Well, I was reading recently about your race where you almost won. It was, it was really absolutely nip and tuck and you must have been so disappointed. And of course, the way things have worked out now, you probably won't get another chance. And I suppose you'll forever regret it, will you? I think at, at, I think at the time um, uh, it didn't seem quite so bad because it was such a fantastic race and uh, we'd both we'd both had a good ride and had a lot of fun. As the years have gone by, it's become increasingly frustrating. And uh, uh, but lots of people remember the race because it was so close. Yeah. Gary's no longer with us and. Um, uh, you're dead right, and I won't get another chance, that is a fact. That was Gary Padgett? Yes, Gary Padgett, yeah. But in the media industry now, there's an incredible uh, thirst for, an insatiable thirst almost, for, for knowledge of the motorcycling from the past, isn't it? Yeah, I think, I think nostalgia is a growth industry. It's, uh, we've, as we get older, we all, we all uh, remember the good old days, and uh, certainly, certainly judging by our publication, as circulations continue to go up, I think, uh, I think it's a, 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 a growing industry. You started in a small way with old bike part and then rapidly you become a media mogul. Uh, you're not quite up to the Rupert Murdoch level yet, but working on it. Well, I, 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 no, I hope we don't reach the Rupert Murdoch level, but uh, yeah, we've. Um, I've got a really good team of people who are all passionate about the subject, uh, as I am. We, we live and breathe it and, and it, it's good fun. It's hard work, but it's good fun. And yeah, we've got um, four magazines and old bike mark now. And the TT Special, which uh, Island Racer, which we've put out. Yeah, yeah. And going well, that? Yeah, seems to be. Yeah, seems to be. Everyone tells me they've bought a copy, so that's that's a good sign. Best five is worth on the island. I see it's mentioned in TD News. Yeah, well, uh, I appreciate you saying that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Nice to Thank talk. You. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks a lot.